now beaming into Nerd FT Radio. This is Nerd FT Radio, where nerds full-time explorers of the metaverse, surface of the blockchain, and not in our mom's basement. I'm your host, RSG, aka the Galactus Guy, and I'm here with Crypto Crier, <laughs> aka Diablo Crier. How are oh, you? Oh yeah, baby. Diablo in it up. Great game. So so let me get this straight. Isn't Diablo coming out in a few months? What's going on? It comes on? out June 6th, but if you had bought the pre-order, you get to play the beta for this weekend, and then there's the open beta that anyone can play the following weekend. That's okay. Really good job. It was fucking awesome. Okay. Got me. So good. Got me pumped up. He's pumped. He's ready. He's going. I might not see him for a little while once that game yeah. comes up, but we'll see what happens. But I'll be like Marvel into... Snap Boy over here. Yeah, I'm gone. still doing that, but I'm not gone. I'm just <laughs> less there. Let's go ahead and jump into some some topics for the last week. Again, last time we did have a guest, Juan, from ReNFT over last time in the last episode. So now let's talk about the events that happened while we were gone for just a little bit on the new side. Number one being... I guess Zuckerberg finally said, you know what? Enough is enough. Yeah, we're done. This NFT thing is not Run cool. I have to, we have to decide to take away some stuff. And by taking away some stuff, I do mean that the NFT feature on Instagram is dead. Kaput. It's over. He's on a roll, man. He just, it's it, done. Is, it, is it his ideas or what? He had Facebook was stolen and now he said metaverse fail, NFTs fail. Not doing too hot lately. It's not too hot, but... I feel like Instagram was of, a copy of something else. Probably. But speaking <laughs> of boomers, all the boomers should be Ooh, happy because their stock of Meta actually went up because of the news. So it turns oh, yeah. out when you invest in something that's called Meta, aka the Metaverse, and you stop trying to become the Metaverse, it's actually bullish for the old people. <laughs> Shout out to them and the being capable... Yeah, people with money. Shout out to them for going ahead and deciding to do, hey, let's figure it out. And it turns out it was way too toxic for them, it looks like. And they're like, you know what? Let's decide to push it back. But on a serious note, they did go ahead and take away the feature or they're about to take over, the, uh, take off the feature. This will then lead into just a halt is what they said, that they're going to take a step back, figure things out. But the metaverse is still, that. that's still the move. And they're just trying to do it yep. in a different way. I would assume this is, the real reason behind it was a lot of people got laid off at Facebook. And I'm assuming the department of NFTs sure. on the side of Instagram got probably hit. got laid off. And they did not want to keep on going until, again, NFTs are a public and everyone's using and they see the actual the actual Value use case for it use, right you know. away, not in the future. So that's pretty much what went down. The revenue stream wasn't there. Exactly. exactly. Even though all the NFT drops on instagram literally sold really out well. in less than 30 seconds 15 yeah. seconds they did stop we did see a lot of those drops happen then afterwards the drops just stopped for the last month so i'm assuming that they're just like yeah we just got to do this some other time but but yeah it's pretty much what's going on that side I, this pretty much also leads into instagram goes you know what we're done no more nfts to surprise microsoft swinging they already in. hit they're already swinging in on the ai stuff chat gbt Everything on that side. They integrated ChatGPT into, into Bing. People are using Bing more than ever before. Again, Bing has always been that, ri <laughs> not even a rival. It's always been that like, oh, you use Bing, you're a weirdo. It's there. Now, people are actually <laughs> using Bing because it is integrated with ChatGPT. But now, not only did they do that, they're actually getting into the crypto space overall. If you go over to Edge, you know that weird like step cousin yeah. that you had that you didn't really they, like? They try Edge. to force you to use all the time. It's actually making somewhat of a comeback. And Cryer, let me ask you, are you going to check it Is out? It? Because it looks like, <laughs> hey, listen, it might. It looks like if you go over to Edge now, there's actually an Ethereum wallet feature that's happening. So Cryer, let's talk about that. What's going on there? Yeah, actually, recently I had just literally, you can't use the chat AI feature unless you have Edge as well. I actually okay. opened it's not recently. You, recently. you blew into the cart. A card, yeah, you yeah. just blew into it just like those blew old games, it. and then you put it back in. All Fired right, it let's up. go. And what happened? So, yeah, since I, yeah, I mean, it, was, it wasn't that bad. The, I, the, the AI side of it is, I think it's even more limited than the open AI one. 
like on the restricting of what you can answer and stuff like that and being very, uh, the only thing nice about it is it does actually use the internet. So it's actually up to date, which is not the case on the open AI side. But again, there's some trade-offs there, but so they just now are saying they're going to go and they have a non-custodial yay ethereum wallet coming out which is that's good that's going to be an, another competitor to something like metamask right and if people are now using it because being more because they actually have an ai feature and it's just again like i've literally i don't i've like purposefully opened edge that was probably the first time i've ever purposely opened edge right if they actually get some usage on that and they have now a web wallet built in i think it's interesting at least to say the least, I think it's something that, you know, I see that they, I'm not a big fan of Microsoft in general, but they are, they, I feel like we've always talked about this before. They just constantly have the shitty version of the coolest whatever product, right? Like it's, that it is, yeah. yeah. Whatever they had a kill, like a killing with, they vented the operating system that most people use. But other than that, they've just been like crap on every other product they don't demand. Yeah. So we'll see if they actually have, if it's any good or not. But again, I, I commend them for making a non-custodial wallet and actually wanting to it'll be on every computer right that's what i was about to say obviously it's forced onto every computer in every windows computer in existence i I could think that that's the people it'll be in their front of their faces they'll be like what is this wallet thing at least so at minimum i think that's a good move but yeah i would like to see some improvements on just again like the just edge trying opening it using it it was just not very nice compared to chromium but we'll see I was going to say exactly what you said there, which is it's going to be there, it, whether you like it or not. And if you can take it off, like, sure, but you at least have to do it. It's what happened on the Apple side when we all got the U2 album just yeah. shoved in our faces. So on this side, that shit it still comes like, up on my Apple music sometimes. Oh, I bet it'll just pop yeah, up. I don't know. Really, but it's just crazy to me that the thing that, hey, listen, as much as we want to talk shit about Microsoft or anything like that, I'm looking at a Microsoft com- or at least Windows program computer. and if you're telling me it's going to be in every single computer, that's yeah. what we talked about where we said, hey, if Apple one day decided to make that wallet app into an actual yeah. crypto wallet on their end, that's mass adoption. That's where sure. things come in. That's where it gets interesting. And to For be sure. honest, obviously Edge and how many users it actually has, because typically you're going to hear people using what? Google Chrome, Google maybe Chrome. Safari. Like some sort of Chrome. That's about uh, it, Firefox. Right? Exactly. No. Firefox, not Edge at the moment. It used to be, remember, Edge used to be Internet, Internet Explorer. Explorer. Used to and back in yeah. the day, back in the day, it did it, exactly. It did dominate. That was it. But then obviously people branched off into other things. Now, when we do have this whole entire phenomenon that we call AI right now, chat, GBT, everything like that. And on the side of even Bing, people are using it more. It's a known fact. It's happening. So on the sense of maybe if on the edge side, it happens as well, and more people use it, which can, again, lead into that Ethereum wallet being used and more people being like, what the heck is this? And actually yeah. learning about what's going on in the crypto world, which then leads into the NFT space. So I'm super excited to see how it goes. Let me ask you, Car, have you actually went in there and tried it out? Or we had yeah, a- I think it just got announced today. I don't even know if it's, is it live? I have no idea. That's what I've literally heard it out. like just today. We'll re- if it's out, I'll definitely try it out. You know me. I'll yeah, we got stuff. So yeah, we got to figure it out and see For sure. how it is. Report back. I, I know a long time ago, one of those I mean, episodes. I used the br- browser. Okay. I like that one a lot. Like the built-in wallet one. So now that's my new like hot wallet on my phone. I use that that's what a I was lot. About to so say a long I, time ago, we did talk about like new wallets we were using, and what, and yeah, again, sure. it was because of the data or the privacy that MetaMask was doing. I know yeah. that you ventured outward, so yeah, I've been using OX Frame. I have been using that one for a long time since that episode. I tried out like three or four wallets: D- X DeFi wallets, Frame. I just tried Brave because it was like available. I just wanted to see. But again, yeah, most of the time now I just use the OX Frame one because it, does, it has a private feature. But actually, it just has a, it's got a lot of good, really good power user features. So if you actually are deep into NFT trading and all that stuff, I think I personally think it's probably one of the nicest UIs. On a, you what you. Oh, MetaMask. Anyone can beat MetaMask UI because it's just like pretty it's not that crappy. Bad. It's just not very good. It's just it's very simple. basic. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we talk about. We need simplicity. We need people not but to not, If like, I just show it to on. somebody for the first time, they're like, this is not simple. You know what I mean? Like, that's, I, I personally think if you get used to the OX one, I think it's more simplistic. It shows you like from a new user perspective, I think it gives more explanation of things. You know, there's like little 
you know, what question marks up in corners and stuff like that. So people actually know what something is or whatever. But yeah, pretty much I only use that. And then I use, I have been using on my phone personally because I hate the MetaMask mobile map app because you have to, you can't turn landscape. So if you're like looking at like spreadsheet style stuff with like blur and stuff like that. And if you just, you can use Brave and then connect, just click like MetaMask, it connects right to blur. And then you go to desktop, like view, desktop site on the thing works perfectly so i can trade on my uh, on blur with right on my phone nowadays which is just pulled it in i use like the crappy wallet to mint but random crap i was actually going to say that's a new thing that's happened as well where blur now is finally mobile friendly because they have they literally weren't yeah that's what i was i think it's i think it's only like viewing your nfts or if you click to view that's good something that's That's a step in the right direction but it's still like a nightmare to use as a mobile like trying to buy and sell stuff it's still a pain in the ass like i said you still have to load i personally still use the desktop version on the mobile and you just have to scroll around a bunch but yeah like when you actually view an nft say i link you my nft on blur then it's just easy to view on mobile it's still so we can't buy it it's just yeah it's just not good i would say you still have to use i think you still have to use desktop Fake news on my side, golly. I was getting all excited. Yeah, come on, man. It's fine. It's fine. (laughs) Speaking of fake news. No, I'm kidding. Speaking of what's going on right now, Cryer, we're going to keep the ball rolling on the exciting things. Obviously, we see Microsoft Edge and what they're doing on the AI side, which now leads into the NFT side. Talk about more with AI uh, stuff. Excuse me, on the. What do you want? Did you see this this tweet that going around? The guy gave a new chat GPT 4. Gave him a hundred bucks and said, I'll be your human liaison. I want you to make a successful business. Have you seen this? I have. I've loved that thread. That is like the coolest thread. That dude's got like 25 grand already in a, a small business firing up. I think it's just such an interesting proposal. What do you think? I mean, no? you, I love it. You know me, but will other people love it? Cause here come the people saying that AI is coming and take everyone's jobs and everyone. I mean, it is coming to take everybody's job. Yeah, I agree. But what's going to happen <laughs> with the people cry? That's what everyone's freaking out over. Learn how to do something new. That's what I tell them, but they're, they don't want to, <laughs> they've been doing the same thing for 40, 50 years. And they're like, Hey, what's going on? I agree. I can see that, but I, I don't know. I just think it's such a cool frontier. Oh yeah. Super powerful tool. Even the, I can't remember what it was. It was like, I think the chat GPT was able to do hundred million. And this one does like 300 trillion, like connection, like connections or something like that, or like referencing data points or something like that, which is insane. So it's just that much more robust than it was in the last iteration, which literally was what came out like how many months ago, maybe like seven or eight months ago, max. Yeah. Not that long ago. is. It's crazy to me is Microsoft's actually like, they're doing pretty good on this side. I mean, it's not, it's not them. They just got lucky. Is this the one that's like, hey, we're the one they paid, they paid open AI to use the. Yeah. It's just yeah. crazy. I think it is. It is nuts, though. Finally, like, I definitely see. Them. I know I'll a couple people that literally their job is like recruiting fields. And like, they'll, they, he says, I literally do nothing at my job now. Like, I literally just copy the person's resume and then I take the job description and sit and copy and paste them into chat bgt chat gpt and then say what are the best qualities that match this job position for this person and it says write a five paragraph essay and then 40 seconds later it's bam and his boss was like man you're really killing it lately (laughs) it's crazy (laughs) hey listen you and i what we've been doing with the last few podcast subscriptions yeah exactly slap that bad boy into you talk with this is nerd ft and then it's welcome to nerd ft radio i will will say if you ask it to make a tweet atrocious still yeah atrocious. he tries yeah it tries to be funny but not funny like or just bad it's, dad humor yeah. it's very bad dad humor but again Even back on me, this I'm like oof. yeah the crier is like oof, those are pretty bad and i got some bad ones <laughs> but back on the other side of like exciting things going on obviously crier i would assume you're excited because you know crypto is pumping and the whole big thing right now is that in the next right. 90 days 87 days hyperinflation <laughs> bitcoin's supposed to be at one million dollars and right now on the spot, we're at 28, th- what are we, 28,434. So that's we that's have. Cruising. Cryer, that's a lot of money. <laughs> like a million? That's a lot. Yep. Like, what is there? Like, it's not, I, it can't. 
I don't think we were all talking 100k and that didn't happen. So you're telling me we're going to do 10 <laughs> times better than that? No. In the middle of the in the middle of the bear. <laughs> middle of the bear, people are getting laid off in high tech com- and tech companies and startups, banks are failing, the government's going crazy, Trump's supposed to be like in jail Arrested. on Tuesday, like all right, something yeah. you're telling me with all that going on and by the way, there's a war overseas, Russia all this stuff, Ukraine, everything I'm just talking about. And now you're telling me, you know what? Bitcoin's going to a million dollars anyway. What, what do you think? It. What do you think? No, I dev- so if anyone knows the references, I think it's things like Balaj, Balaji or something like that. He used to be the CTO of Coinbase. So he's coming out with a prediction that hyperinflation is here. The banks are failing. He released a, a pretty decent sized thread about all the information, pretty much stating that he th- thinks that 126 other banks fit the same profile as SVB. So that could cause some serious failures across a lot good. of banks. Yeah, it doesn't sound great. And there was already, we already, this week we put in $300 million essentially of, again, fake paper money. That doesn't have any value. And pretty much what he's saying is the more that this happens, just how Venezuela happened, they had very rapid inflation and it doesn't take a lot of time to realize. Like it's something where it's, okay, here we go. Now we're at this stage and then bam, it goes from one to zero very quickly. So that's essentially what he's stating. Uh, So his prediction is, and he put $2 billion up for uh, bets against people saying that, Bitcoin will, the person betting has to buy one Bitcoin and he will escrow $1 million. And in 90 days, if hyperinflation is real, which according to pretty much like standard definition, that inflation reaches 50% year over year. Essentially, that's the bet. I would say reaching a million dollars, I think is a little bit sensational on what he's saying. And again, like the, it can be like this, like if Bitcoin goes up and the value of the dollar goes down, that's essentially what he's saying like it's not oh now we have to say if that happens then you know food is going to be like 10 grand to go get food or like it's going to be paper money is worthless like it's happened in multiple countries like germany in the after world war ii they printed i think i can't remember how much percentage wise but it was like an insane amount of money and again like it wasn't worth anything because they had no backing they were shattered after war but we've seen it with a couple of countries i'm not saying it's going to be like one million dollars in 90 days i think that's a little far-fetched but i definitely see what he's saying if the more money that we print from the banks to protect them and bail out the depositors even though we're not calling them bailouts we are protecting depositors with <laughs> That's the new. Say, that's the new term. Say that again in, in that tone. <laughs> Protecting please. depositors. Thank you. Yeah, and that's the new terminology they're using. Whatever the fuck they want to say, it is. It is still again. If these there's SVB, Silvergate, Signature, Credit Suisse just failed. It was a 8.5 billion dollar company that just got purchased for essentially one. What was it? One billion. So that means that there's a lot of shit in the background of that one that they aren't showing right there's seven billion dollars missing somewhere uh, essentially in the value not saying it's stolen but i'm just saying this was a company worth roughly eight billion dollars two weeks ago and that's now being sold for one so that doesn't look great and i just think there's a lot of issues right there's we've seen this we've i've been saying this for multiple years since my first newsletter in september 2020 was like i don't i'm not buying crypto because i do because it's cool and i like the idea of it it's cool I'm buying it because I think my value of my money is going down. That's literally the first thing I ever wrote. For me, it's gone, right? And I don't see it stopping. And again, over a multiple year period, I could see Bitcoin being over a million dollars within five. What about 90 90 days? days. (laughs) (laughs) Tell me, tell me the 90 day case for higher. 97 days. (laughs) Uh, Give me, give me 87 days. What do you think Bitcoin's going to be at? I could see hitting 40. Okay. Which means Ethereum is where for you? Maybe like 2,800. 2,800? I think this is going to be a big... This is going to be us. This is literally what happens every time. Like, you look at back at 2019, there's a substantial rise. We saw Bitcoin hit 19,000, then went all the way down to 4,000. Then it went back up to 13,000, and then went back down to 3,200. There's this whole, like, fake start of people pumping it up it's getting there i don't think it's going to break all-time highs i do think we could probably you know 
I could see we hitting 32, 32 if you want to get really technical. 32,000 is like my next resistance point. If we break seven, 78, sorry, yeah, 28,600. If we break that with some volume, I could see us going to 32 pretty quickly. That happened very, this last time that went up like that, it went straight through like the 28 to 32 range. Just whoop. Like it, there's no, we didn't have a lot of trade there. I think those pots could be filled. And with the whole narrative kind of going and people uncertainty with banks, I could see it being pushed that way. But again, like, I don't think we're going to 60, 70,000 relatively quickly. I think it could go hit like 40 and then be like a little bit of trap like it was in 2019 and then fall back down is how I'm playing this personally. Uh, when you say it falls back down, what, give me the number of the fall. Down. I get like 22s, 21s. I don't think it's not like, like, oh, we're going back to 10K, bro. No. I don't see that happening. We were talking about this whenever it was like 16,000. I was saying this is literally, this is like buying a car below manufacturer price, like to create the car. You're buying a Bitcoin for $3,000 cheaper than it actually costs to create the Bitcoin. So, you know, that's nuts. That was a fantastic deal. It wasn't very long. We got what, like maybe a month. If you look back, it's always like you got a month to... <laughs> When ETH was down and in the shitter, when it was like 800, 900 bucks to a thousand, a thousand bucks, you had three weeks to buy. And if you didn't buy and everyone's like, oh, we're going to 200 guys. It's like, no, we're already down a shit ton. Like you can't expect more. You only get a little couple days to get those low purchases. You gotta have conviction on those plays. Like it's, that's when I bought a bunch and then I've been collecting Bitcoin and Ethereum all through this downward movement. And uh, now most of my buys are up coins up probably close to what 30, 40% and ETH's up like up over a hundred percent since my average buy-ins in the June, July. And then Bitcoin's been more of just slowly buying some and just historically also Bitcoin's that one that pumps first, right? They, they, they oh, yeah. see the big Bitcoin spike. We're already seeing dominance come in with straying away. Uh, the ETH to Bitcoin ratio is the lowest it's been in like, I don't know, eight eight months or so drop below that it's been like the 0 0.07 0 0.65 range for a long time i think we actually let me check it with we broke that down we're in the 0 0.063 so if you look back on the daily let's see i think the last time we were at these prices was like june that fall into june we hit all the way down to 0 0.05 I, and i think that's definitely bitcoin makes the strongest move First, and then we see ETH and alts kind of trickle in. But yeah, it's best, to, I personally think, to ride the Bitcoin wave first. All right, makes sense. Well, hey, listen, we just talked about crypto going down just a little bit, maybe after we hit that 40. Then we go down a little bit, like 22. You know what else is down right now, Cryer, that we haven't talked about? All those YouTubers and celebrities <laughs> that are getting sued in a 1 billion class action lawsuit because they actually on that they, they promoted FTX in it. Yeah, he is on that list. Who else is on that list? Tom Brady <laughs> is on that list. Is he really? And That's all funny. these, oh yeah, Tom Brady's on that list. Everyone's on that big ass list. But the thing I wanted to ask you to see if we're on the, on the same page here, Cryer, I don't necessarily think that these actors, these celebrities, these YouTubers should be sued whatsoever. I think the YouTube people more so than the actors, personally, Why? because they're like being paid to do an advertisement. Like if you were paid to promote like dog food and then the dog food was bad or something like that, you have no say in that product. Okay, so if I was a YouTuber and I had a code RSG, and if you go to FTX, you get $10 for free, $50 for free. All I'm doing is bringing people to the platform, and that's all I typically know. I get a sponsored deal. I make money off each episode, et cetera, or each person that goes in yeah. actually goes I, Again, I, guess I don't really see that being a problem personally either, really. I mean, I don't think that's don't an know. issue, but on the sense yeah, of what Tom Brady did, he had a commercial. What Matt Damon did, he had a commercial, things like that. I just, do you guys think that the, like Matt Damon sat down and right before he signed the deal, he goes, like, you know what, let me see people. your, let me see your financials, your book <laughs> yeah. first yeah. before me doing this. Are you real? Are you serious? Obviously, not only did we get tricked by what happened with FTX, but they did as well. I mean, yeah, now it's like a, he lost like. An insane money, amount of Tom Brady lost like an insane amount of money, so much money. So now, when we talk about those individuals, like you said on YouTube, where maybe they were shilling the crypto coin, they were shilling like all. I think these people things. shilling FTX, the coin, 
I think they that's the issue. That's correct. That's the issue. That's the if you're issue. just so, shilling to use the okay. platform. I don't think that's a problem. But I think a lot of people who were doing that were probably shilling the token also. The token as well. So th- that I do see the issue on that. But again, more on the celebrity side or just the people that just had like use F use yeah, like use my FTX. FTX. I don't think that should be the issue. It should be more of the sense of those people. But to be honest, that's just that opens up a can of worms of something else where people that are shilling these like crypto random shit coins all over YouTube and people lose money and all this stuff. Yeah. That's another problem as well. All, that's all of us. like what happens, all of us, what happens with Jim Cramer when <laughs> he said, hey, buy this or do this or do that. It just feels funky. I mean, yeah, hey, Jim Cramer should be definitely in jail for all of the inverse calls that he just <laughs> – do your own number one do your own research number two just do uh, everything he says opposite you'll be fine he just said to sell your bitcoin he said he'd be selling bitcoin into this in this pump right here well a week ago when it was like 2021 or 22 or whatever probably shouldn't have done that huh why would you sell it man it's yeah, it's just barely right. above I the price forgot. of no i'm thinking he, i, I just forgot i just forgot that it, he said that and it pumped so it's literally <laughs> listen i have a friend i have a friend on instagram he used to be my if you're listening to this shout out to you every time he talks shit about crypto about nfts Rip. about anything on instagram buy crypto just get ready for it because whenever he's talking shit, things go good for crypto. It is so funny. I have a few friends that message me. He's like, hey, he did it. Yeah. He did the thing. He, he did, did the it, thing. Bye. Yo, bye, bye, bye. Every uh, single time actually, it pumps through the sky. Really funny. I had one of my friends, uh, Robbie. Shout out to Robbie. He, I hadn't talked to him in, I don't know, about it, but like sh- probably a good year. And yeah, he called me out of the blue. He's like, hey, man, how you doing? And it was like June, July when like, everything was dead. And, I, and then he like came in the discord and was like talking shit about crypto and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, right, it's, it's a good time to buy. <laughs> it's a good time to buy. And they're gloating. It's like when we tell you guys, yeah. if you ever take a screenshot. <clears throat> when they're trying to buy at the top. Yeah. What, sell something. The other thing, sell if you bit. ever take a screenshot of your gains, sell a little bit. It never. Dude, I actually did the other day. Wrecked. I, was, I took a picture of all my, <laughs> I have 30 ETH in profit from fucking Opepins and the checks or whatever. I'm going to take a screenshot of this <laughs> And now it's 20 ETH. Lost like 10 ETH. Yeah, it's just lost 10 ETH. <laughs> like, like, listen, man. It's I just a thing. Sold it all. If you ever take a screenshot and you're gloating, just know. <laughs> sell a little bit. Something's going on. Same way if your friends if come and you say, oh, too, what happened? Yabba's, Yabba's, gloating, Yabba's too, gloating. I'm gloating. I'm Criers. If anyone's gloating, just be like, you know what? Let me just take 5%, 7% off. Just the top. It's just a little 33%. bit. Let's see. 30. Arch, okay. Or one third of your... <laughs> Of it. But yeah, that that pretty yeah. much wrapped <laughs> that pretty much wraps it up on the on what we want to go ahead and talk about. The one last thing I did want to chat about was on the nerd side. So, Cry, I know you're playing nerd Diablo. Up. On my yep. side, honestly, I'm just playing Destiny Two. I am playing Marvel Snap, just using Galactus like no other. But the, the other show that I've actually been watching since we can't really talk about The Last of Us anymore because the show's over. By the way, you did your homework. <sighs> what did you think? Yeah, it was great. It was Good just ending. like the game, and I loved the ending. That was why the game was such a cool. I didn't know if that was. I, I didn't know what they were trying to fit into the last story because it, it. I felt like a very like from the end of the eighth episode to the ninth episode. I feel like it was like a really big Rush gap. A little bit. Like, an, well, it's just like he's leaving this. She just killed a bunch of people, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Now we're with the fireflies." It was literally like you know, bam. So. I didn't know where they were going to end the season. I'm not saying it was like rushed or anything. I mean, they did a really good job on it, but I'm just saying it just felt like, uh, I don't know, pretty quick on that. And I think there could have been 10 okay. episodes personally. Okay. Um, okay. I will say that obviously it's been a week, so we're able to talk a little bit about it. So the whole first season, it looks like it was the, a whole full first game. And what's yeah. going to happen next is that it did get renewed, number one. So shout out to, for them coming back. Yeah. Thank you for not leaving us like Westworld did. What's going to happen here is that The Last of Us 2 is going to be stretched out from two to three seasons. Now, nice. that is going to happen, obviously, in a few, two, three, four, five, five years, let's say in that range. And once that is over, what will happen do you think they will end it after that or do you think they go like the game of thrones route where even though the creator of it yeah they just create new things and they keep on going i personally think that could be a cool way to do it if the creator of the game is is there along for the ride 
figuring everything out with him. I think I that'd agree. be awesome so he can explore more of it, which could then lead to another game. And or I do on the sense of they just finish it after the second seat of the yeah, second I game. personally haven't played the second game, so I don't know the storyline of the either. second game. I don't know if it's really easy to wrap it up in two and it's kind of like really tied up story. The first season I felt was like very neat and bow tied. And again, the ending was really cool. It's just, do you value this or do you value, you know, this? It's, it's, it's a very, you're like, Jesus, that's something that was my kid. Holy shit. You Dude, know what I mean? That was wild. So a lot of people um, are, a lot of people are complaining how like he just took on like everyone. I'm like, guys, do you understand that he's literally. He actually was a part of the military. He actually was in the army, and all those people on the in the fireflies probably just, like yeah, like like they're just regular people that just were giving yeah. guns. And because of the apocalypse, because or because of the yeah the apocalypse, pretty much that was yeah. going on in in the show in this world. So you ex- it's like saying, hey, would you bet against the guy that has twenty years of like military experience? It's like John Wick, like do you expect John yeah, Wick like to jo- kill eight hundred people Wick. in one? What? Or the eight hundred people? One I'm movie, going with John Wick. That's not realistic. I can't time. believe he killed that many people. Obviously, it's not realistic. It's a fucking TV show. First off, yeah. The, by the way, guys, this is a fake TV show as well. So, <laughs> what did you think? Zombies aren't happen? real, guys. Yeah, zombies know. aren't real. Number one, number two, they don't even say zombies; they say infected. And number three, it's fake. That's all I gotta say. But the show ended up really good. The other thing that's going on right now, the other show, excuse me, is a Ted Lasso. I was actually able to finally see that first episode. It, yeah. Phenomenal. I'm still they like just... five or six behind on the second season. I'm dude. The second season. That show is. I just... love... It's so funny. It's, it's funny. like wholesomely fantastic. It's wholesome. It's yeah, exactly. You get that whole feel, but also it pulls on those strings when they do. They break into some stuff, and you're like, "Wait, this was supposed to be a happy show, and they just <laughs> yeah. rip your heart rip left you. and right." Yeah, they just go in sometimes, but great show. They're leading into some awesome things. Check it out. It's every Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken, on Apple TV. And other than that, again, Bad Batch is still going on. Mandalorian's going on. Shout out to Cara for still not watching. Um, That's right. What else we got? That's pretty much it. I did go see Shazam. We'll talk about that. I did see the Shazam, by the way. The critic reviews. The critic reviews are really bad, but the audience score is over 80. I personally will say it was better than the first one, number one. Number two, I like the first one, so. great cameo at the end. Number three, the two end credit scenes, very good. Stay till the end, and that's all I will say. The uh, Actually, one more thing. Some, the thing that bothers me about Shazam, Shazam is one of my favorite DC characters, but Shazam's villains are just yeah. not the best. And this is, there's these three, it's the three sisters. I forgot what their names are. Eh, it is what it is. Good show, though. I mean, a good movie, but we'll see. You tell me next when you see it, Cryer, and right. we'll figure it out. But talk about Diablo for me. What's going on? It's fucking awesome. Okay. <laughs> Number one. I'm a massive ARPG fan. That's like probably my favorite genre of games. So I've played D2 weapons of hours of D2, probably, and it literally insane amount. Played a shit ton of D3. Did, you know, it's very, I would say D4 is a lot better than D3 just because it's a lot it's a lot less like cartoony. I didn't really care for the cartooniness of Diablo 3. So they did a really good job on the atmosphere and like the aura that you feel cuz it's very dark just and then this whole one is how it is in the other games is like you find waypoints and you go to it and then it's it's a very sequential game. There's not a lot of maneuverability or different than maps. It's, it's all variable on the maps that change each time, but it's very segmented. No, more so where this one is completely open world. You have like mounts and stuff like that now. So you're riding around to like going to dungeons and doing all these things. Questing is really cool. And as you're leveling the sometimes if you play like World of Warcraft, or something like that, like this level is a low level place, right? And it's like level one through 10 or something like that, right? Then you got to go to a new place to kind of level up. This one kind of just every t- everywhere you're going is the monsters are matching your level so you can travel around and do whatever you want and the high replayability of things i think is going to be very good spells are really cool they did a really great job on just like making it making you feel extremely powerful but like in a very limited way like you that costs a lot of resources if you're not managing your resources properly you can definitely get stuck or get killed really easily the bot there have like new world bosses you're playing with everybody out in the open too 
Whereas like Diablo 4, you could only play with four people. Now you can play with, I don't know what the max is, but I'm sure like a ton. Like I saw 20, 30 people on my screen for a world boss. Really cool on that side too. But yeah, overall, especially for a beta that's not coming, it's not coming out for another three months. Like I had no issues. Like the, this besides logging in, that's always like a problem. Every, my, it shows my like friends list and it's all eight, 87 people that are playing Diablo 4 at this moment. They had, you had like an hour, I had like an hour and a half queue or some shit trying to get into the game. But uh, overall, no bugs. I felt like everything was crazy polished. Cutscenes were like cinem- like crazy good, like cinematic level. Okay. Like watching. I mean, I enjoy the way those. Let me ask you now, you, you are playing the beta. Is this going to, anything that you do right now, is it going to stick when the game nah, comes nah, it's, out? It or leaves, or yeah, it's just, it's just a wipe. Yeah, it leaves. yeah you're, okay. for the beta, you're play, you're able to play. So usually, generally, the games are, there's five acts in the, or the D2 had four acts and you had an expansion at a fifth act or whatever. But this one is, you're able to play through the first act, get to level 25 with the sorcerer thief or barbarian so it's pretty much two ranged classes and like a barbarian which is like the close and personal type class so i got a sorcerer to to 20 so far i'll probably finish up you get like a, if you finish the levels and get to past 20 you get like some extra decks for when the game actually comes out or whatever so i'll probably I'll get those but uh, if only they were yeah. nfts 100 percent, man like this would be like literally the perfect game to the break game. nfts into it because again, like it's the whole point of Diablo always is item randomization is why the game is fun. You play the same levels over and over with a random generated map and you find new items like every time you do the dungeon that makes your guy a little bit better each time. Yeah, it would just be incredible. The, the And D2 and D3 have had literally like secondary marketplaces that are like illegal essentially avoids the tos of your game blah 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 i've been banned from diablo 2 for trading damn before. prior uh i was Oops. when d3 like the auction house came out i made like a couple grand selling items just like that was the first time where it was like this is cool as shit because i buy buy stuff from people trade with people and then i'm selling them on this marketplace for 200 bucks a piece it's nuts so really cool idea. And again, like this is me personally, I think this would be just literally oh, the yeah. perfect It'd game, game changing. to incorporate into. You know what other game would be like really good? Watch. What do you think? RuneScape? You going to oh, say yeah. that? Yep. Yeah, gonna... it's exactly the same idea. It'd, like, it'd you, be you, the you... same thing. I will say yeah. also on the Any side RPGs, of what I've been doing with Destiny, like you get that feel as well. It's randomization. Destiny, I mean, those, yeah. it'd be fun. Destiny's it'd like be the fun. perfect blend of. Yeah. Yep. FPS and RPG. That's why I like Destiny a lot or played the shit out of it because it was. It's got, you get a little bit of the RPG element. Like, you gotta beef up all your character, the strong of the light power, and all that stuff. By the way, I'm a dog at Destiny now. I mean, the other dog, thing I did want to mention it's oh, a it's fun, so fun, fun game. It's a great can you game. play like older stuff still? Or like, the I, Taken, you're if you're able to play, guy, just, if you're able to play the Taken cool. King like raid, I don't think so. It's probably one of the best. Yeah. It's like one of the best like storyline slash like raid events that I've ever played it was such a well done it was really hard like i failed me and the people i was playing with failed times to finish the boss uh, take kill the taken king it was very difficult and it was just like a ton of fun it was only the titan was able to do like the jumps properly to like like platform this area to knock him yeah, down yeah. and be able to attack it was really difficult and really fun but yeah i have this is a new expansion right like what's called lightfall or something yeah, but I'm just playing like the regular stuff. I don't even have the expansion. I'm just playing a competitive and it's free to play, right? Play. Yeah, it's free to play sure. on that sense. Exactly. So I'm doing all the free to play stuff probably will lead into me buying the new expansion. But I did want to also say right before because we got to wrap this thing up. Yeah, Unfortunately, RIP to the commander, which was one of the main characters. I know that Lance Redder Redrick is his name. He actually passed away. He was actually in in John Wick as well. He was in this game, and unfortunately, due to natural causes, what we think, RIP to him. A lot of people in the game were going over there and saying their farewells to the character. So super sad. I, actually, just getting involved into this, and then, oh, this went ahead and happened. So yeah, pretty upsetting. But yeah, that pretty much wraps it up, because we're cutting into the almost a 50-minute on this one. Golly, this is, we were just nerding out doozy here. One. But um, we get to talk about everyone. Week, oh, yeah, so. that's true. We got to bring some stuff back. But again, for everyone listening in, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Nerd FT Radio. Remember, we're on YouTube, so slide over there and you can hang out on that side. Remember to subscribe over there. Remember to like. Remember to do everything that you're supposed to do because you're a fan. That's right. Just remember that. And remember, grab that brick, place it on a wall, and then grab yeah. another one. That's all I got. Do it again. Catch you guys and do it again. Catch you guys later. Later this week. Peace.
Peace.